Hello, it's Brianna. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in March and I'm very aware that we're halfway through April but time got away from me as it's been getting away from everybody so this is now when we're going to be doing this even though this month's almost over and that's okay. That's okay. We're taking it day by day and I'm here to talk to you about the 12 books that I read in March. Okay, so the first book I finished in March was The Beekeeper of Aleppo. This was a story about um, a husband and a wife who were fleeing from Syria during the Civil War and it kind of chronicles their journey from when they left Syria to when they arrived in London and try are trying to um, get their paperwork ready to be granted asylum in the UK. I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5. I found it to be a really moving story. Um, if you guys didn't know, both of my parents are also refugees and um, especially for my mom, she was a boat person so this story resonated a lot with me because it reminded me a lot of her story and what she went through when she was fleeing Vietnam in the 70s. I do find this book a bit hard to talk about um, so I'm gonna leave it here but I think a lot of the reason for why I like this book so much is because of the personal connection I had to it um, through my parents. So I can't guarantee that if you don't have that personal connection that it will be as moving of a story to you, but for me I found it to be incredibly beautiful and I do hope that if you are to read it, uh, and I recommend it, that you will like it every bit as much as I did. The next book I read in March was The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is a story about two magicians who are basically locked in this lifelong battle between who can be a stronger magician. Honestly, I don't know what the f this book was about. I read the whole thing. Um, I did, I really liked it too. I liked it and now when I'm trying to figure out what this book is about, I'm like, I don't really know. I don't really understand the story at all. I don't know. I don't know. Do I recommend it? I guess I recommend it. I enjoyed it. If you like really atmospheric novels, ones that really have a nice world set up and you feel like you've escaped into this world, then I would really suggest this. It's a good one that makes you feel like you're part of this magical system that they're in and you feel a part of all the events. That's what I think swept me up into this novel and why I rated it so highly. But I do warn you, this story, <laughs> this story is confusing. The next novel I read in March was Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. It was the second in the Renegades series. Um, if you guys recall, I loved the first book, Renegades. I had a really good time reading it and it made me super excited to start reading again. And when I got the second book from the library, I was stoked. I really wanted to know what happened next and then I read it and then I was like, uh. Um, oh my god, I gave it a 4 out of 5. Okay, so I, apparently I gave it a 4 out of 5 on Goodreads, but honestly, 3 out of 5. That book, I don't know, nothing happened in it. Um, of importance I feel like and the characters were very one note like all the development that they had gotten through the first book with um, Adrian Nova the two main characters I felt like just was dropped and the story is it was not until like the last couple of chapters that we actually got any kind of action or really exciting story built like continuation of that story a lot of it felt so much more like it was focusing on the romance between the two main characters Adrian and Nova which is fine right I like romance in my books too but I don't like this much romance when the story itself is not a romance novel and I also really didn't like what the author did with Nova's characterization in the second novel I feel like she was reduced to this really weird caricature of herself from the first book as I didn't feel it to be as morally gray between um, the two points of view as I did in the first book so I mm, I own the third book I'm gonna read it a lot of people who read this series said that the third one is the best one of the series I'm still looking forward to it but the second one was just such a it was like this for the first one and then it was like psh, for the second one so I'm hoping it does this for the third one or else I'm gonna be super disappointed um, but we'll see I'm probably gonna read it this month so I'll let you guys know the next novel I read was The Couple Next Door by Shari Lapena. I gave this a 3 out of 5. I honestly have no remarkable thoughts about it. It is about this couple who were at a friend's party next door and then when they come home they find out that their infant daughter has been kidnapped or taken, otherwise missing. And then the story kind of unravels as you find out more about these characters involved and it's a classic whodunit story who took her why they take her is she alive is she dead is she just is she taken by someone that we know and then the story just kind of unravels from there and then you find out more about the parents and then the terrible secrets that they've been keeping from each other I read it in a day 
Um, and I gave it a 3 out of 5 because I did not not like it. It was fun for what it was, but it wasn't anything that was moving to me. I don't particularly care to read more books from this author. Uh, I don't know. I just felt overall it was really average. I didn't feel like I was held in suspense at any point in the story, which I think is the whole point of thriller novels. And I basically was just finishing the book just to see what was going to happen and not because I wasn't, I don't know, I want to feel that like anxiety when I'm reading thriller novels and in this book I was like, okay, okay. If you're bored and this is available for you as an ebook or if you already own it, then I guess you can read it, but I wouldn't really necessarily recommend it um, if you are looking for the next great novel. So the next four books I'm just going to talk briefly about because I already mentioned them in my Animal Crossing Readathon vlog. The four novels I read were The Poet X, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars, Circe, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars, Wayward Son, which I gave 1 out of 5 stars, and The Tea Dragon Society, which I gave 4 out of 5 stars. Continuing on, I read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and then I also watched the movie after I finished reading the book because I needed more of that. I gave this book a 5 out of 5. You guys have probably all already heard of it. You've probably read it or at least seen the movie. Um, I was late to the party with this one. Greetings. I'm currently editing and I did not do a good job explaining what The Hate You Give is about because I just got too caught up in my emotions and then I swallow a bunch of spit and it was disgusting so I'm gonna go ahead and just put a text post in here of what the back of the book says and I hope this suffices. Sorry I'm not articulate. Thank you. Bye. And it just was an incredibly, incredibly moving story. Uh, the character dynamics, the interpersonal relationships between all the characters, I was such a huge fan of. I can't speak enough praise about this book. The story matter is extremely important to our times, of course. And in particular, the thing that I liked about this novel was how rich the characters were individually. Um, I'd already mentioned that I liked their relationships with each other, but I think the strongest part of this book is how how well fleshed out each character is on their own. I loved how each character that was brought in kept appearing throughout the novel. No one was just brought in with no purpose and then dropped immediately. Anyone who's brought in and made to seem important stays an important part of the story and kind of reveals a different part of society or a part of Star's life and it was really such a well thought out book and it was so beautiful and I, I cannot speak enough praise for it. Next, I read Hamilton the Revolution by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Um, this is a nonfiction account of basically how Lin-Manuel Miranda put together the phenomenon that was Hamilton the musical. Um, it that's, that's all it's about. It gives you all of the background information, how Lin put the music together, how he got all of the crew together, and then eventually how they got the cast together, and it gives you a little bit of insight into each member of the original Hamilton Broadway cast and how they came to be a part of the production, and it was just such a fun story. If you were obsessed and or are still obsessed with Hamilton like I am, this is a must read. I found it to be so much fun seeing how all of the original cast came together, how the crew kind of came together piece by piece to put together this insanely huge production that that has touched so many people's lives so many hearts including mine i loved it the second to last book that i read this month was funny you don't look autistic a comedian's guide to life on the spectrum by michael mccreary uh, i wasn't anticipating reading this many memoirs in one month although i guess you can't really call the hamilton book a memoir but regardless i read this it was available on libby and it sounded interesting to me and pertinent to my life so i decided to pick it up and check it out i ended up giving it a three out of five stars it is written by a comedian he is about my age i think according to the events the timeline in this book he should be in his early 20s i'm in my early 20s and i was reading it and i related to a lot of what he was saying um growing up as a person on the spectrum and i found a lot of his comments to be really poignant and really true to the experience of someone living with autism and I feel like the reason I gave it a three out of five stars is because being in your early 20s and writing a memoir I'm like how much do you have to write about <laughs> um, and I don't mean that in a rude way but I, I feel like if he had waited maybe like two or three three more decades and then written a memoir it would have been a lot more rich and there would have been a lot more life experience that could have been put into the memoir that would have really beefed it up more a lot of it was just anecdotes from his childhood that kind of didn't really flow together for any reason it was just a bunch of random stories which is fine right but i found it to be just okay in terms of content i walked away from it being like oh okay that was interesting but nothing that i would really 
think about again later. The 12th and final book that I read in March was Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I had watched the movie for this book when it had come out because I was obsessed with David Fincher. I still am. Every movie he's come out with I've been obsessed with, especially The Social Network, which is my favorite movie of all time, but that is beside the point. Um, I picked this book up because it was available as an ebook um, for my local library, so I just grabbed it. I figured I would just check it out because I had nothing better to do. I read it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. I thought the story was was very good. It chronicles the story of Nick Dunn and Amy Elliott Dunn. They are a couple and one day Amy Elliott goes missing and then you kind of get the story told uh, in present day from Nick's point of view where he's kind of dealing with the police and with the investigation of finding out where Amy went, who took her, if she's still alive, all of that stuff and then you get it paired with chapters from Amy's diary that chronicles from the time that she met Nick Dunn originally to the present day with Nick and I think the way the story unfolds is so interesting and everyone knows what Gone Girl is about now so I don't even know why I bothered giving a summary of the book but Gone Girl was a cultural phenomenon when it came out right and then now saying that you're gonna Gone Girl somebody is like a verb it's just ugh, it was amazing so I really liked the story I loved Amy as a character I thought she was just so interesting and so fascinating to read about. Um, the reason I gave it a 4 out of 5 though not a 5 out of 5 is because the last quarter of the book really dragged on for me. The mystery of it all kind of builds and builds and builds and builds and builds to a crescendo and then about three quarters of the way through I think is when things are revealed for the first time and then once that happens the rest of the book just drags on and I feel like it would have been better had Flynn chosen to kind of just cut the story off a few chapters after the mystery was revealed. A lot of it felt just very... maybe I'm just being nitpicky but the last quarter of the book was not that interesting to me and I was just reading it to finish it and not so much because I was excited to see how it ended. For me it ended when the mystery was solved and Maybe you feel differently, maybe you like the ending of the book, but I don't know, I feel like it it was a disservice to the rest of the story to have the ending play out as long as, that did, as it did. But otherwise, I had a great time reading it, 4 out of 5. I also loved the movie adaptation, which doesn't happen as often with books I feel like, but I watched it before I read the movie. I watched the movie before I read the book, so um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. And those are all of the books that I read in March. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe and healthy. I will see you all again next time. Bye.